All right, I have one hell of a story for you guys this time. My Amanita Muscaria experience, part one. So let me just set the scene for you. I'm in New Zealand, on the South Island, right at the very top of the South Island, Hippie Central, Takaka Bay. And I'm at this off-grid help hex. And one day, I'm sitting nearby the fire, but it's daytime, there's no fire at the moment. But there's this German guy, he's also volunteering there. And he starts joking with me, pointing at the Amanita muscaria mushroom, saying, Hey Trav, you know that's like the king psychedelic, yeah? I'm like, what? <laughs> they're poisonous, bro, what are you on about? And he just laughs. It's like, nah, they're the real deal. He hadn't taken them himself, but he was certain that they were extremely psychedelic. So that piqued my interest and I had to at least do a little bit of research because I hadn't done any, no research at all. I just assumed, like everyone else assumes, that they're poisonous. And that is actually true as far as I'm aware if you don't dry them out. So it's very, very critical, crucial, important. If you're considering taking these, fucking dry them out properly, completely. But so I started to do research. Did about 10 hours of research and, and bear in mind, I'm an off-grid helpex, and I did this over a couple of days. Off-grid helpex with uh, only my phone and a solar panel to charge my phone with. So that was what I was doing my research with, and it was on a website called Erowid. Very, very good website. The link will be in the video description. Check it out if you want to know about any kind of substances that alter the mind. It's incredible. So. After doing some research, I, I couldn't believe what I was reading because I was like, oh my God, he's telling the truth. These are actually incredibly psychedelic. They, the experiences I was reading, I was like, holy shit. So skip forward a little bit to the day of a ceremony where me and three friends are going to take them. And if memory serves me, I had about 12 grams, which is quite a moderate dose. They're not the same as psilocybin, it's a different chemical. When you dry them out, you're converting ibotonic acid into musky mole, and musky mole is a psychoactive chemical. It's different from psilocybin. Very important to note that because when you take enough of them, your consciousness will go somewhere, your body will still be there. Um, but if you're going into this thinking, oh yeah, they're just like normal magic mushrooms, you're gonna be fucking shocked. So I took the 12 grams, and I didn't eat it much at all in the morning, and I think that was very important. The other people, they did eat a bit. They actually had lower doses, but within an hour or so, one of them had thrown up, and after a while, the other one had also thrown up. So, but my experience was very different. I'd eaten them, and within an hour or so, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't feel tired. I don't really feel um, tired or sick or anything that like I'd read about, and people go to sleep, or they wake up and they're in the trip. But I tried to anyway, I tried to go to sleep, I lay down and I just was a bit fidgety. Just had a bit of extra energy and you know, I was sort of like, okay, not feeling too much though. But then I started to storm around the area thinking, these aren't toxic, I'm okay. I wanna gather some more for my next time, next trip. Because obviously I couldn't dry them out because to dry them out, we actually had to give them to the owner of the place and she took them to a house and drew the, dr dried them out on, a, on an oven. It obviously was in the middle of nowhere, off grid, didn't exactly have the ability to plug in a dehydrator. So yeah, storming around, storming around, thinking, yeah, these are all right, you know, these are fine. I've just got a bit of a buzz, but there's nothing wrong with them. Then I start thinking, I start remembering, during my 10 hours of research, I remember reading at least once or twice about how shamans back in the day would drink their own piss to reabsorb the musky mold that wasn't digested by the body completely or, or it's digested but not absorbed completely and even going as far as villagers drinking the shaman's piss because it was considered to be I don't know exquisite magic whatever and apparently this shit happened so I did actually have a bottle with me and it was full of water but they actually had the urge to piss and I was, there was no doubt in my mind a question in my mind of what I should do here I tipped out all the water I pissed in the bottle and I drank the whole fucking thing. I should you not. It didn't taste that bad, 
a bit salty, but it was just warm and it was really weird. Like, okay, this is strange. I really shouldn't be drinking this. It's my own purse. Never mind. I did it and I, it fucking worked. Within about half an hour or so, I could notice that the effects were getting stronger. I started to feel like a little bit like drunk, but my mind was completely clear. In fact, my thinking actually increased in its like speed, but also instead of just being like words and sort of like a general sort of here and there, it went into pictures and it was like really, really fast. And it's like, I was thinking of a problem and instantly I'd have all these visual images of how I could solve these problems. It was like, ding, 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 done, ding, 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 done. Um, it was really amazing. It was like my thinking increased dramatically and I thought like, I'm using more of my brain. That was what I was thinking about. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Holy shit. So this sort of builds up momentum and I start coming back to the campsite, wanting to tell my friends what I'd done and that it worked. I imagine I looked pretty insane. Like, guys, guys, I drank my piss and it worked. Uh, I did actually convince the German guy to do it, but that's another story a bit later on. Fortunately, he just threw it up again. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I gave a brief description of what I'd experienced and I was telling them all these things about them and how I love them and all of this. And then I had the urge to go off on my own again. And a few of them actually followed me, but I was like, no, 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 I want to go on my own. And that was possibly a very good decision, but also very stupid. And we'll get into that in a bit. So I go off on my own back into the middle of the New Zealand bush. And I start to lose control of my body a bit, but my mind's clear the whole time. And if anybody's been really drunk, sort of know what I mean. And you sort of lose the control of your bodily functions. But this was like, I really wanted to walk forward, but my body would stop me. And it was like fighting with my mind. Um, to, 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 for control over my body and then the last things that I remember actually happening was that I tipped out all of the contents of my bag and that included like a speaker and a phone and everything um, and then I don't know what happened afterwards whether it was just a trip or some sort of dream or something but anyway so I'm running and I'm running and I'm running and I'm running and I have no idea where I'm going, what I'm doing, I'm just fucking running. And I stop for a moment, I start breathing, I'm like, oh, my chest really, really hurts. I sort of ignore it and I just keep running and I'm running. And this goes on for ages, you know. I, in, at least in this trip, I ran so far. Uh, whether or not I actually did is another question. But anyway, so it gets to the point where the, pe the pain in my chest is just insane. And I start to get a bit worried, actually. I'm like, oh. Did I take the wrong mushrooms or are they actually toxic? And am I just gonna keep running till I'm dead? Or is this pain in my chest just gonna get so severe that it's going to kill me or whatever? I start getting in this loop and this spiral. Then I start getting a little bit delirious thinking that I'm not actually seeing where I am. Like my vision is taking me somewhere else. I think I'm actually back at the campsite. I just can't see it because I'm on these mushrooms. And I start saying to like my friends like, guys, guys, tell my family like I love them uh, I fucked up I, I took some dodgy mushrooms I think I'm gonna die like and I, I go through the whole experience of dying and death and just getting to this point of accepting it like yeah I'm gonna fucking die and the pain in my chest was just absolutely insane and then for every sense of the word I died I literally died and I was when, when I did die, the pain in my chest completely disappeared and I was greeted by all of these beings and they had like a human shape but they were like a starry night sky and made of a turquoise glow and they were all clapping and cheering me like Wah hey, wah hey, you made it, you made it to the next level of reality, well done, well done like they were so happy for me and I'm just like holy fuck, okay, just gonna go along with this um, then the next thing I remember happening was I had a life review and uh, it started with all of the negative thoughts and feelings and emotions I had throughout this life experienced as pain throughout my body and it was just fucking insane. Uh, my, my screaming was like, ah! and my friends said they could actually hear me screaming. So something was happening, my body was experiencing something and my consciousness was, but the two weren't sort of connected, right? But then after that, it went into all of the pleasurable, all of the positive thoughts, feelings and emotions that I had throughout this life. 
and it was the most blissful sensation, like an orgasm, but your whole body, and it just kept going. And my friends said they could hear my screaming going from ah to ah, and oh, it just went on and on and on and on. It was amazing, really. So then shortly after that all finished, I was greeted by this being that was, I guess you could say it was God, it was sort of represented as a huge being in a big white cloak and whatever. I mean, I'm not Christian, I guess this was just some sort of representation of God. We're talking a bit, as you do, talking with God. And uh, then I'm shown uh, some future thing for humanity that's coming up, some sort of event or something, and bear in mind this was in 2018. Um, I don't know what this event was, if it's happened yet, whatever. Uh, but it was very significant, and then I was sort of talking about, you know, my next life, what it might be like, and, and all these sort of things, you know, very interesting. Then the next thing I remember that definitely happened was I was shown, like, all of these universes stacked up against each other, and they all represented as a big ball of light, and there was just infinite of them. There was just infinity. I just, from as far as I could see, there's all these universes stacked up against each other. And then suddenly, well, I'm like, okay, uh, just gonna get used to starting my life in my new reality, but then boom, I'm back in my body, it's completely pitch black, I can't see a fucking thing, I have no idea where I am, I've lost my shirt, and uh, yeah, I, I'm completely fucked. And I just, I just sit down and just start to sort of go over what's going on in my mind, but it was really cold. And it was like a new moon, and you know, it's in in the in the nature, and I was freezing, man. And um, I luckily I was wearing Alibaba's, and if you don't know what they are, they're just very baggy, hippie-ish sort of pants, clothes, trousers, and that potentially proved life-saving because I sort of crawled into them, and sort of like sitting down with my head uh, wrapped under them, and they were wrapped over my head, and I was breathing into them. And that was just enough to circulate some hot air that potentially could have been life-saving because even I was there for hours. And think of it, you know, I just went through this incredible experience and I'm back and I have no idea where I am, just processing it all. And Oh, man. And then, thankfully, I made it to the sunrise and the sun started to come up. And by that point, I was shaking, like the beginnings of hyperthermia. But I made it through. And I realised I wasn't actually that far away from the campsite. I wasn't actually that far away from where I tipped out all of the things from my bag. So, did I actually run anywhere? I have no idea. But I definitely experienced something. So, I gathered up my things and I ran back to the campsite and I wrote down as much as I could about what I just experienced. And I was so fucking grateful to be alive and just processing the whole thing. So that was my experience. That was the first experience I ever had with Amanita Muscaria. Absolutely incredible, life-changing, really. And I, I can't claim that this is what happens when we die. To me, it sounds pretty awesome and it matches a lot of things that I've read about. So it's hard to say if things that I've read about, like in The Law of One, influenced what I experienced, but who knows? I'd read a lot of things about the afterlife and death and many different theories. It just happens to be that my consciousness latched onto the one that The Law of One talks about, where there's progression through multiple levels and stuff like that. So that's the first experience, guys. I have three more write-ups covering a few more experiences, but that, in my opinion, is the most powerful, and it has it changed my life, and I, I really get incredible responses from when I tell people this story in person. If you've known me long enough in person, I've told this story. Absolutely amazing. But be fucking careful, because I really could have, ne I could have died. If I was wearing jeans, that might have been it. I might have suc succumbed to hyperthermia. Um, or who knows what else I could have done. If I actually was running around, I could have ran off of the edge of somewhere or something. So if you're taking it and you're going for a high dose, have a fucking sitter. Have someone be able to check on you. Why my friends didn't come look for me in the night when I didn't return, I don't know. But none of them were really experienced with mushrooms. Especially after the screaming, but never mind. So yep, that was what I experienced. I got a few more for you, but incredible, amazing, life-changing. Amanita Muscaria.